Hello you lovely people, welcome to our auction walk around. This is video one of two for our sale on October the 22nd. Now do excuse us today, we are doing this a little bit ahead of schedule because Fuzz and I are about to jet off to Malta for some classic car fun out there. So our house is not in the normal order, so please bear that in mind when you look around. We're not up to our normal standard, but the lots are. That's the good news. And we start with this. This is very unusual for us and very, very, very cool. This is a 1947 Lusser Dodgem car. You've heard of dodgy car dealers, but this is a Dodgem car dealer. I don't mind being one of those. This is very cool. Obviously, it's been decommissioned in the fact that if you stick electricity in, it probably won't work. But what you have here is a genuine 1947 historic fairground ride that you can do one of many things with. You could put it in your man cave or she shed. You could convert it into a table. I've seen this done at a cool diner. They put a table there. You can sit in there. I've seen people stuff them full of motors. I've seen them put them on go-kart chassis. There's so many things you could do with this. Maybe four or five grand would buy it. You could take it home. Very collectible, very rare, and exceptionally cool. What you do with it is up to you. But that's a fun thing to kick us off. I'm gonna fly back to the start of the auction now. And we come on to this. Isn't this a beautiful thing? So this is our Rolls-Royce 2007 Rolls-Royce Phantom. What do I need to tell you about the Phantom that you don't already know? This is when you've made it in life, when you've reached a certain station, achieved a certain level of success, you might treat yourself to Phantom. Now that's hideously ruinous when they're new. Fast forward a little bit, when the car's a bit older like this, 2007, you might pick this up for 70, 75 grand. And can you think of a nicer way to roll around? Because 75 grand these days, by as you, you know, middle top of the Audi range, doesn't it really? So you could either have that, maybe a, an RS or this. I think I'd rather have this. Obviously, you know, it's gonna cost a little bit to run. You've got to budget a few thousand a year to look after your Rolls-Royce Phantom, but it is gorgeous. It's got a full book pack, full set of keys, recent batteries, special trim and paint finish, soft closed doors, of course. It's gorgeous. It wants for nothing other than for you to own it and love it. And obviously put quite a lot of petrol in it, I'd imagine. So that's rather special. This I do like because it's going to be quite price rangy. This is a 2002 Porsche 911, obviously the 996. Whether you like the 996 headlights or not is up to you. I personally love them and I also think these have been a massively undervalued and underrated car for a long time. So I do think to buy one of these now could be quite canny because they are in the ascendancy, easy for me to say. 83,000, it's a Tiptronic. Comprehensive spec with sunroof, which is very, very nice. I think obviously silver, the German national racing color with black interior. Very obvious, but for that reason, everybody wants to buy them. It's a saleable combination. You will always sell a silver with black Porsche because it's the German national racing color. Everybody wants to buy them. Very nice car, needing a little bit. It's de lacquered on the bonnet there. You've got a few bits, but a super, super nice car. It's not gonna be a huge amount of money, I don't think, for what it is, with 11 stamps from the OPC, the official Porsche center, so well worth the bid. Meanwhile, over here, this is very cool. Now this was in the previous sell, and for the life of me, I do not know why this didn't sell. Because this is exceptionally cool. It's a 1958 MGA Coupe anyway. That's a big tick. Secondly, it's fully rally prepared. So if you look inside, Ellen, it is worth a little squint. This is why we have Elliot, who's our live and athletic cameraman, because he can bend in. Look inside, you have got in there your cage, your trip meter, all of the accoutrements for rallying. So this car has competed. Again, if you come and look at the back window, Elliot, You've got all of these amazing stickers. This car has been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the sticker. It's FIA papers. So what does that mean? It means if you bought this car, not only do you have a really cool 1958 MGA, but the car is eligible for so many historic rallying events. And it adds another layer to ownership. If you turn up a car show, it's just a cool car. If you want to do something else with it, you can take it and enter into competitive motorsport with the correct paperwork and have a huge amount of fun. And generally speaking, that adds a price premium. So for the life of me, I do not know why it didn't go at the last sale. I'd be very surprised if it didn't sell and sell well at the next sale on the 22nd of October. So that's a great little car, that one. Moving on, if you are familiar with Marcos, this is a very special car. So this is the 1962 Marcos Spider prototype. It's been in the current ownership with its previous owner for 49 years. So there is some provenance and then some with this car. And we believe there's only three in existence. So what can I tell you? So one owner for 49 years, they only built 18, there's only three left. It has the original buff log book, buff log book even. It's got a four-cylinder, 1200cc engine. It's got a gullwing chassis. It's originally a modified gullwing bonnet. It's got so much, so much history with this car. It's competed, it's displayed at various shows. It's got loads of mods with a bullet gearbox, alloy bell housing and centrifugal clutch. Just a cool car. I mean, what is that worth? 
who knows, because they never come up for sale. But I think if you're into Marcos, if you're into low volume British sports car production, if you're into hand built cars, that is one for your collection. Very unique, very special, one of three. Now this has just arrived, so bear with me because the details of this are scant, but my word, what a beautiful car and a beautiful colour. Of course, the 156, 2.5 litre V6, one of the nicest sounding engines you could get in a production car. It's on 43,000 miles. It's a manual, only four former keepers, brand new distant pads, just, just been fitted, crikey. Cam belt's just been changed, new water pump, full service, handbrake cable. Somebody has very recently spent over two grand servicing this beautiful car. Black trim is very nice, it's got the tele dye wheels, and it was driven here, 260 miles to the showroom, perfect. So I do think, again, not going to be a massively expensive car, we'll probably estimate that one three and a half to four and a half. What a thing, there'll be a time in the future where we all wonder why we didn't buy these when they were single figure thousands, and that could be this week. So make sure you bid and bid well on that one. That's a lovely car, I do like that. Loads of history with it as well, really nice thing. We believe it's one of 78 left, so crikey, they went fast, didn't they? 944, one of the classic archetypes, stereotypes you could argue, but again, cars that sell well and sell well in certain colours do so for a reason, because people can identify with them, and that means there's always a great market for them. Guards Red, 944, 1984, what's not to love? It's a manual, it's got the black interior, recently recommissioned, it's been in dry storage since 2006, it's got the removable roof as well, which is really nice, looks beautiful actually, I do like these, I do like these cookie cutter wheels, I think they're very nice. It's obvious time, it's the early one before the facelift with the early bumper and the early dash, but I like those, I think they look really good. What can I tell you, it's had some work done. Top end engine rebuild, new injectors, new calipers, new disc pads, new shocks, new clutch, new fuel pump, new solid state relay. So a tiny bit of welding and a tiny bit of paint, but a huge amount of money spent. We've estimated that at eight to nine. I think it'll make it all day long, but crikey, come on. 80s Porsche for sub 10K, got to be worth a go. Got to be worth a go. What a lovely thing. Right, this one here, I do love this. Ford Model A, do you remember there was a time that all of these got hot rodded and street rodded? This one managed to avoid all of that being left hand drive. So it's a 1929 Ford Model A, four door sedan. It has done 13,000 miles. It is of course everything exempt, tax exempt, MOT exempt, pretty much you name it, drive it any way you like. No one's gonna care. 3.3 engine, matching Lucas tires. It's got the very cool rugged, I can't speak today. It's got a very cool luggage rack on the back to put your bits and pieces in. It was, as you can probably guess by the lovely condition you can see on screen, a California car. So, no rust. All the places where an English car would have gone, this one is really super solid. So a healthy history file and a full log book. So it's built for the American market, but it's translated beautifully over here. And what can I tell you about it? It's been used in loads of films as well. So you have a screen used Model A. We think that's probably gonna make about 11 to 13 grand on that, but nothing to do. Beautiful patinated older paint, just something to enjoy. I think these cars as well represent, these kind of 20s cars represent something of a bargain. If you look inside, Look at that, I would imagine that's probably the original door card, seat edge, and many, many of the trims and bits and pieces. That's the beauty of a California car. I'd imagine it's had the vinyl roof. Oh, the smell, I'm gonna have to go in there. You can't appreciate this on the video. Imagine what a 1929 Ford smells like, and you'd be right. Oh, leather, wood, oil. And what's really interesting, I think there's something cool. This car will, in very few years time, in six and a half years time, be a hundred years old. I think there's something very cool about owning a car that's a century old, and that one soon will be, so a good one to buy. The MG, right, where are we going now? We're running around because we're working on scant information because we're doing it early. Again, another classic car, stalwart, the MGB. This is a lovely one, I'm just gonna find it. 1975 MGB Roadster, it's just arrived. What can I tell you other than the fact it's gonna be price rangy, this one, it's only gonna be a few thousand pound, this. It's very nice on the body. It's the rubber bumper, which obviously makes them slightly less desirable than the steel bumper cars, but very usable. Great for parking in modern car parks. It's got the mini lights on. It's a level old bus, this. It's just got a few little blebs just coming through on the paint. It's obviously sat in this paint for a long time. Interior's lovely, I would guess. Original seat's in very good condition. And I think it's one of those perfect cars that you could just jump in and use and enjoy, and then just very carefully go through and do a few bits to you. But you know what, if you left it like that for a couple of seasons and had some fun out of it, I think that's a cheap drop top. I do love an MGB. And the great thing about these, cheap to run, cheap to insure, you can fix them with a piece of string and a bent spoon and anything you need, you can just ring up MGOC spares and you'd have it tomorrow. Fantastic car, 
brilliant first classic that one and of course buying drop tops in the winter or as we come into autumn is a very canny thing to do. Right, did you watch Magnum in the 1980s? I did and for that reason one of the cars I really wanted was either 308 or 328 GTS. This is the 308 and I think by the fact it's black that's actually cooler than having a red one. I think Ferraris always look better in black. Red is the more common colour. Being a GTS, the spider has got the removable roof as well. What do I need to tell you? Three litre, eight valve car, just exceptionally cool. Only really ever going one way. This one's very nice on the body. It's not concourse, but it's exceptionally clean. It would probably benefit from a mop and a detail to get it to absolutely exceptional standard, but what a nice car. It's not gonna be huge amounts of money, maybe 45, 50 grand might get you into that, which for these days, for an 80s Ferrari, if you look at what everything else in the range is doing, it's going to be great value for money. A lot of fun to drive. These, again, find a good specialist, don't have to be ruinous to fix, ruinous to keep. You can run one of these on two or three grand a year. Again, a good insurance, limited mileage policy. That could be the car that you promised yourself when you were a kid. Go and treat yourself now you're a grown up. It might be less than you think. Oh, this. One end of the scale to the other. So this was the top end of the 1980s. Dare I say, this was not the bottom end because this is a GL, but this is a 1981 Escort 1.3 GL. I cannot describe to you, ladies and gentlemen, how lovely this is. All the cars look shiny on the camera. This car is close to perfection. And I use that word very advisedly. Very few cars, classic cars, restorations are perfect. This car is almost there. It's so nice. It's got 23,000 miles, which probably explains that. It's a manual, MOT exempt, of course. And to my word, just look in here, if you had one of these in your family, and we did, we had a five-door Escort, this is going to take you right back. It's just wonderful. Look. Look how clean it is. Look how perfect it is. The seats, the interior, it's just like walking into a Ford showroom in 1981, which I did on a regular basis. My dad worked in Melton Mowbray. We had a Ford showroom at the end of the road. I used to go in there every week. I remember these coming out. It is pretty much showroom spec, honestly. The paint is beautiful. The trim is beautiful. I don't know where it's been stored, but it's been stored phenomenally well. This has been inside all of its life, you can see that. Just look at the trim, look at the edges of the rubber. It's almost impossible to restore a car to that kind of standard, unless you're spending an obscene amount of money. <gasps> it's from Alan of Romford, which was the other Ford dealer I used to go into, because my grandparents did in Romford. So I wonder, I wonder, did I sit in this car in 1981? Because I used to go into Alan of Romford about every month, so maybe I did. Very, very cool. What's it worth? This is a crazy thing. Three and a half to four and a half grand. So you're buying a mint, and I do mean mint, Concourse level Ford, three and a half to four and a half grand. Instant cool, rock up anywhere, classic Ford show, classic car show. Everyone will go, my grand had one, my mum had one, my dad had one. It's one of those cars. Haggerty Festival, the unexceptional car. So many things. Love that car. Three and a half to four and a half grand, you could buy that. Great way to earn a cool old Ford that doesn't bust the bank. And talking of cool old Fords, my word. 90s Fords go quite rusty and they went through the period where they weren't worth an awful lot of money. So for that reason, it's very hard to find an RS2000 at all. This is the 4x4, 63,000 miles. If you can't afford an Escort Cosworth, and I think many of us have missed the boat now, 50 grand is minimum, 70 to 80 grand is the top. There are a lot of money. This is a no reserve car. This could be very exciting. This could be your alternative to Escort Cosair ownership. Manual car, original and correct, undamaged interior, factory roof, book pack, full set of keys. It's been in storage since 2009, so look at that with your Recaros. Look, these are a cool car. Very, very cool car. So you get the Recaros, you get kind of all the ingredients of an Escort Cosworth, but for a fraction of the price. Probably rarer than an Escort Cosworth, I'd imagine, actually, because everybody saved those. Everybody knew they'd be worth a lot of money. These went through the bit where they were worth buttons and nobody did. So that probably, I think, has to be one of the best unrestored ones around now. What will it go for? You decide, because it's no reserve. This car, again, is being readmitted. I do not understand, once again, why this car didn't make the money in the previous auction, because it's so nice. 72 Ford Capri 3000 GT. There's only 32 examples left on UK roads. This one's done 83,000 miles. It's a manual. Of course, it's the three litre 12 valve V6 that does 138 brake horsepower on these. It's got this lovely baby blue with black stripes. And of course, it's a South African import, if you remember from the last video. So it's rust-free, beautiful shell. It's been gone through, because sometimes the cars come over from South Africa, they're rust-free, but the bushes have gone, the rubbers have gone. All of that's been done. So this is a very nice car that's just ready to enjoy, ready to stick in your Ford collection. Or again, the Capri was the car you always promised yourself. 
Maybe it's the day you deliver on that promise. Again, another reissue. This is Jensen's 541. If you watch Fuzz's video on this, Fuzz is by far the world's greatest expert on these because he has one of these. They're stunning. They're incredibly rare. Fiberglass body, amazing engine, just a wonderful thing. We're estimating this at 24, 28,000. It's done 35,000 miles from a deceased estate and just cool. I mean, Jensen's are great old money cars anyway. Everybody knows the Interceptor. That's the car that everybody seems to go to, but the 541, I think even cooler styling, very much of its time, 1955. And you will also be able to hang out with Fuzz Townsend because Fuzz Townsend has one of these. And if you buy this one, he will want to be your friend. What else can I tell you? It's got the correct interior, which we think is original. You can look through here. Look, if you come here, El, we all like a little bit of extra love with our purchase. All these are mass spares and history. That all comes with the car as well. That all comes with it. It's got the correct Michelins on there. It's going to need a little bit of recommissioning. So it runs and starts and drives and all that kind of stuff, but you will need to spend a little bit of money to get it back on the road. That was what was supposed to happen before it came into our possession. So bank on a couple of grand to make a really nice job. Bid on that and what a thing and Fuzz will be your best mate. Another Escort, we're talking about 90s rarity. So we've got our RS2000 4x4, super rare. We've also got the dog barking in the background. This I think is even rarer. This is the Escort Mexico Special Edition, 1995, 87,000 miles. Just a rare model. They didn't make many of these. It was to celebrate obviously the original Escort Mexico. It's kind of the reissue, same color as the RS2000, which I do believe is also a Cosworth color actually as well. Again, have a look inside. Can you think of a more 90s interior than this? So you've got your zebra stripes, very clean, lovely service history as well. And it's just great. Not being cut about, not being cut about. I'm not sure they're the original wheel trims. I think you might want to treat yourself to a set of original trims. Or maybe put a contemporary alloy on there and you would have, I think, a car you could turn at 24. I mean, look, just come, just come here, look at this, look. Because it's a three-door shell, Imagine this with either a nice set of OE trims on or a set of really nice. That's an Escort Cosworth, isn't it? This is going to be single figure thousands, I would imagine, to drive around in something that has the exact profile of an Escort Cosworth. That's cool. And again, fantastic first starter classic. Can't recommend that one highly enough. And it's a Ford Escort. Everyone can fix it, everyone has bits for it. I think it's time to look at a nice old money car now. Isn't this beautiful? The Mercedes 123, this is a 230C coupe. So it's the beautiful, what was the Stuttgart taxi, the W123, made into the coupe with a longer door, so the much nicer body line. This is an exceptionally nice car. It's one of the better examples we've seen. A few tiny bits to do. You want to repowder coat your air deflector there. A couple of tiny bits of minuscule trim to sort. But other than that, the car is perfect. So seats are lovely, dashboard's lovely, the body works really, really good. All the sets of genuine Mercedes mats. Look how straight it is. The arch is all perfect as well. Really, really nice on this one. Look in the boots. You've got both sets of mats. You've got both the fabric mats and the rubber mats as well, the genuine Mercedes ones. So you can see what kind of owners had it. Original warning triangle, all of the stuff. It's been 88,000 miles, this one. Fabulous service history, minimal ownership, original dealer plates and window sticker, and only two former keepers. What's it worth? We're estimating at eight to nine, which I think is drive around looking like, I don't know. What would you say, successful 80s stockbroker with taste? Because these were the cars that people bought in the 1980s. They didn't want to be as flash as a Porsche owner. They wanted to fly under the radar. So you could have had a 911, but instead you bought this. And I think looked a little bit cooler and understated with the original wheel trims on as well. Just lovely. If you want to say you're doing well, and you have impeccable taste, but you don't want to shout, one, two, three, coupe. 230 as well, automatic, lovely combination that, really nice. Now let's talk about true beauty. Again, come look at the profile of this car. This is an exceptionally pretty car. Don't need to tell you it's an XK120 Roadster, 1952, original matching numbers car, restored to original specification with 47,000 miles. The car is perfect, ladies and gents. Twyford Motors and all the work has been carried out by Guy Broad. If you don't know Guy Broad, he's a lovely man. He's on Brown's Lane in Coventry, which tells you everything you need to know. He is the best. He's the guy that all the top collectors go to. Just as beautiful work. It's just lovely. Five new Cinturato tyres, the right colour British racing green. It's got its original toolkit and tonneau. Amazing history file. New mohair roof. 
Just had the engine and ancillaries rebuilt not long ago. Seven and a half grand spent on those. Cylinder heads being stripped, so it's a full and leaded head as well, 1,700 quid. What an incredible thing. So someone has spent an awful lot of money on this car over the years, an awful lot of money on this car. We've estimated this as 55 to 65. So again, it's one of those great restorations where you're picking up the result of someone else's hard work and investment for probably a lot less than they've spent. So I think if you want an XK that needs nothing, there's a great car. 55 to 65, I think if you want one, it's worth a bid. Left-hand drive, of course, which I really don't mind at all. It's because it's an import spec, which means you'll have a much bigger market to sell it to if you ever come to move it on. Sell it in the UK, sell it to Europe, sell it back to America, whatever you want to do, but what a nice thing. Talking of great British drop heads in racing green, we move to this, a 1977 Aston Martin V8 convertible. It's a Bannon conversion, this. So obviously it's a coupe that's been coach built into a convertible. But what's nice about this is you're gonna buy a car that has all the looks of the Volante, all the looks of the real thing, for a fraction of the price. So it's brand new MOT on this. It's been in a private collection, amazing service history. It's just been recommissioned, all gone through suspension brakes and air conditioning, new set of Goodyear tires, recent retrim as well, which is very, very nice and very in keeping with the car. Absolutely gorgeous leather in that. And it's the early Carburetta model. Now, if you know what these go for, the V8 Volantes, these go for enormous amounts of money. This being a conversion is gonna be 75 to 85. So if you want the look, and most people wouldn't know, if we're honest about it. It's only the real experts that get up close and know the difference between the conversion and the real car. But what a wonderful way to travel for between 75 and 85,000. That's a particularly nice car, that one. Beautiful color. Paintwork is very good. I give the paint a nine. So you've got a couple of tiny little imperfections here and there. But again, a car to enjoy, to cherish, and to drive. Lucy likes it. Jensen Interceptor, so another great British car, got loads of cool British GTs and sports in the next sale. 1973, same year as me, 40,000 pounds worth of invoices in the history file on this one. Full length of Basto roof, it's on 65,000. It is, of course, MOT and tax exempt as well. It's just had, not long ago, an engine tuned by BHP Brooklands, retrimmed in 2009, at a cost of 5,000 pounds. It's got Pirelli P4000 tires, full belts, Really cool retro sound classics. As I say, that monster, monster history file. It's also got this very cool front spoiler, which I'm a big fan of. And that could be 25 to 30 grand. Now, I restored one of these on our little show recently. We spent well into six figures to restore one of these. This is an exceptionally nice car that doesn't need really anything doing to it. And you could buy that for 25 to 30 grand. 30 grand is not a small amount of money, but in the Jensen world it is. And this is a great car for that cash. I think somebody needs to come and buy that before I do. That's lovely. Moving on, slightly cheaper, but no less fun. 1990 Astra GTE convertible. We think, if we're reading the DVLA data correctly, there's 18 of these licensed on the road. So this one has done 58,000 miles. It's a manual. If you were back in the day, you were either a Ford guy, a Volkswagen guy, or a Vauxhall guy. So this would have been up against the Golf GTI convertible and the XR3 cab. I think the styling on these with the bonnet vents and the deeper bumper, I think these are cooler. Been recently recommissioned to the sum of five grand. What? Someone's just spent five grand on this, putting it all back on the road, which is amazing because we've estimated it at six and a half to seven and a half. So you could buy it at the bottom end of that estimate. And basically you've had free recommissioning, haven't you? That's mad. Loads of parts with that, book, pack and wallet, seven entries in the service booklet. So not complete and comprehensive history, but the car says to me that it has been loved. When you look around a car that has an incomplete history, you get a bit of a feel as a dealer. Some cars you think, yeah, they haven't been serviced. Some cars, obviously have, and maybe they didn't get the book stamped. That's a nice car, six and a half to seven and a half, lots of fun, particularly when the sun comes out. Right, cheap fun in the sun, a 1969 Bond Spartan. So underneath all of this, you've got basically a Triumph GT6 engine, so it makes lots of lovely noises. So 80,000 miles this, so I had 1,200 pounds worth of work recommissioning her to get her back on the road. She's very tidy, I have to say. Stylistically, the Bond Spartan is obviously a Marmite kind of thing. It's quite homogenous from some angles, less uh, from others. It is, of course, a component car, but very nicely done, I have to say. Very nicely executed. You've got your rollover bar for safety there as well. What else can I tell you? It's got a new high torque starter and a new battery. It's got some very comfortable and narrow and in-keeping Mazda MX-5 seats. It's even got charging points on the dashboard. So somebody has tried to bring this up to date and make it a more usable classic car. But the most exciting words you can ever read in an auction catalog, as we know, no reserve. This car has no reserve. So you could buy it for whatever it goes for. I think a bit of fun, 
Cars like this I love because you can tinker with them. They have Sunday morning tinker factor, don't they? You can just go through, open up the bonnet, change something, add a little bit, change a gear knob, update the steering wheel, put some different alloys on it, whatever you want to do. Just has hours and hours of fun and you'll always be getting people asking you what it is, which is also a fun thing at car shows. Mini, just the cutest this thing. Isn't it lovely? 1968 Cooper 1275 Mark II. It's had an amazing restoration. And if you know your minis, AMK have done the work on this. All the bills to prove it as well. It's got 1400 on the Odo. It's a manual car, bare metal repaint with significant mechanical work. A beautiful interior with slidey windows and the older handles, of course, as well. Kind of look at that, L. So it's an exterior hinge model. So it's got all the things that make Coopers sexy and desirable. Slidey windows, exterior hinges, little 10 inch mini lights. It smells of fuel, which is just so nice. Really nice on the seams as well. Just a great car. Because it's had a lot of work, because it is what it is, it's a Cooper 1275 twin tank, 24 to 28. Not an inexpensive amount of money, but you couldn't build it for that. We're back to these cars that you can buy restored, all the work done. You couldn't put that car together to that standard for that amount of money. So, and you'd have to wait for it. So why not buy that one today with everything working and enjoy it, right? This is very cool. And what do you say, look, flip front. It's got a flip front on it. This is very modified. You either love this or you hate this. Guess what, I love it. I think it's brilliant. I love the color. I love the fact it's got a flip front. It was once a 1987 Austin Mini Piccadilly. That was a long time ago. Many things have happened since then. It's got the sport arches on, it's got the mini lights. Absolutely love the colour combination. It's hilarious. Look inside, look. It's orange and white and orange and cream, wherever you look. 42,000 miles. It is a one-off, isn't it? And this is why I love the mini scene so much. Anything goes, you can do what you like. But whoever's done the work has done it absolutely beautifully. The trim, I think, was very expensive looking at it. The boot's very nice. Boot floor's exceptionally good as well. We're only estimating this at five and a half to six and a half. Again, a car that you couldn't build for probably two or three times that amount of money. If you like your cars to be modified and fun and silly and just hoon around in a great looking Mini, that's probably actually very easy to live with on a day to day basis. Fresh MOT as well, five and a half to six and a half grand. Absolutely adore that. So moving up to the modern Mini, talking about kind of neoclassic stuff you can use every single day. Modern Cooper S convertible, this one, 70,000 miles. It's a manual, three former keepers, eight stamps in the book, fully operational power hoods, air conditioning is this one as well. Original dealer plates and the bullet alloy wheels. Great color as well with the stripes. So a car that could probably benefit from a detail to make it perfect. You often find with these the stripes go. So whack a new stripe kit on it. That would be good. Bit of a paint detail, re-dye the hood. My word. That's a cheap car. We think two and a half to three and a half grand. Can you believe that cars this nice with that kind of history in really nice body condition are going for that little money? It's a great time to buy these. It really is a fantastic time to buy these. They'll never be cheaper. That's my prediction. Now the 70 Austin Mini Clubman, this colour I adore because they only did it for one year. It was a launch colour for these. 88,000 miles, everything exempt, MOT exempt, tax exempt. Very early example of a Clubman, owned by the same person twice. I always think that's a good sign. If someone buys a car back, it means they missed it and it was obviously a good car. You never buy a car back that's rubbish. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Lots of original features, very rare, unmodified, very hard to find a Clubman that hasn't had bits put on or bits taken off or pretty much as it was. I think it just needs its arch trims putting back on. I think it should have those. It needs a filler cap look. You can look through them and it's got a crook lock and a spare steering wheel. I adore this, I think this is fabulous. Look in here, look how, really nice. I think the seat design in the early 70s was just something else, like a fat biscuit design, we call that. But you just screamed at that, and again, it just goes back, I bet your nan had one. My nan did have a Clubman. My mum had one too. Everybody had one of these in their life in the 1970s, and for that reason, I think, great bit of nostalgia there. Really wonderful colour, really cool car, and the fact it's a Clubby makes it a little bit rarer. Three and a half to four and a half grand, not a dear car. Moving on to the E-Type. Lots of great British cars in this sale, don't you think? We're becoming the home of fine British motor cars, which pleases me greatly. 1973 once again, so coming up to 50 years old. Jaguar E-Type V12 Roadster, it's been with the same owner for 19 years. That always bodes well. No one hangs onto a car for that long that they don't like. It's done, 68,000 miles, it is a manual. It's got a matching set of Pirelli P4000s, the tonneau. A car cover comes with it. 
And it is that wonderful thing that's a really nice, tidy car that I would give kind of, I don't know, eight and a half or nine out of 10. It's not concourse, it's just exceptionally tidy and presentable and usable. You've got a lovely bit of patina on the armrest there. The seats are perfect, there's no, tip, there's no rips or tears. A little bit of patina on the steering wheel. What you've got there, a car that's eminently usable, top end of these now is well into six figures for the early Series 1 cars, well into six figures. The incredibly early cars are even seven figures. So a Series 3 V12, what a cool thing, because 60 to 65 grand, probably that's going to go for. Just cool, just unspeakably cool. The car that Enzo Ferrari described as the most beautiful car ever made. He was talking about the Series 1, to be fair. Series 3, slightly different looking, but a very cool car very usable and in e-type terms very affordable right little drew pritchard's car is back in the sale again this just blew my mind why this didn't sell last time i've had a look around guys this is probably the cheapest carrera cab wide body manual which are all the things you want in a porsche in the country so it's 2006 911 carrera 4 cabriolet manual wide body wide body is the thing most people want that because it just looks cool it's like the turbo look Massive history, four previous owners, got a car cover, it's had the IMS seals done because everybody wants to know have they been done, yes it does. It's got the design tech exhaust on, owned by celebrity antiques midget, Drew Pritchard, my good friend. He loved this car so much he bought it back. He's owned this car twice as well, going back to what we said earlier about the car that's been owned twice. He sold it, massively regretted it, bought it back. That's how good the car is. He's having a massive clear out because he's got a big announcement to make about his new project which I won't spoil, but that's why he's selling it, otherwise he would have kept it. Great car, that one. This has just arrived, so again, please bear with me, scant details, but I can tell you it's a 1967 Jaguar S-Type, which I just think is bloody lovely, because they re-released the S-Type, didn't they? And I do think when they tried to do the kind of 90s reincarnation of the S-Type, they didn't really do the beauty of this car justice. One of the nicest cars ever, 3.4 litre, they don't really get the love that the Mark I or the Mark II gets, and therefore they don't really get the price that those cars get either, but they're so usable. Roger's driven this, he says it drives beautifully, it's a fantastic color, it's got a gorgeous interior. It smells right, that leather to me looks original. It's got a very nice mountain wheel in there. Just a super usable car, it's not gonna be a massive amount of money, probably somewhere between, I don't know, 12 and 13 grand. Not an expensive car. I think that's gonna be really, really nice. Watch that one go, I think that's pleasant. Very pleasant ways to drive around that. In an exceptional color with very, very good paint, actually. Do like an S-Type, it's even got a Leaper as well, look. Moving on to Big Jim's favorite. Jim here, who you will have seen, man of many great waistcoats on our videos. He used to sell these when they were new. In fact, he was BMW's salesman of the year sometime in the mid 80s. He used to smoke one of these as a 23 year old man. So you can imagine how cool he looked back in the day. You could look as cool as Jim with or without waistcoat, in this 1988 BMW 635 CSI Highline, 180,000 miles, don't forget these will do quarter of a million without blinking, so that's running in mileage, four previous owners, you've got the TRXs have been changed, it's got the TRX wheels with it, if you don't know these cars come with metric tyres, which look cool, but are horrendously expensive to replace, so you do have those, but you've also got these rather nice normal E34 alloys, which I think look very cool, you see a lot of 6 Series on those because much cheaper to replace. It's 1,400 quid for a set of TRXs. Nobody wants to do that. Previously a BMW Owners Club member. What can I tell you about this car? It's nice, it's got the leather option. The paint, if I'm honest, is, I'm giving the paint a five or six. The interior I'm giving a, maybe an eight and a half. But it's gonna be quite price rangey this, because this is not perfect. Very presentable, very level, very tidy, and eminently usable, but it's only gonna be nine to 11 grand, so not even the middle of the market for these. So if you want one to have some fun with, and again, love cars like this, knock the edges off, just go through and sort and fettle as you go. This is a great car. So four previous owners, what can I tell you? Loads of history with this car, everything about it. Yeah, 19 stamps in the service book as well. What a lovely project car, nine to 11 grand. If you fancy one of those that you can improve as you go, that's the one. This is the end of part one. Do make sure you're clicking through into our playlist to part two, but I shall give you more amazing cars from our 22nd of October sale. I'll see you there.